smile upon my face Cause there's excitement in the chase This I know Yeah, I'm going for the ride And by myself I am alive And I soar Still I run towards the wind And let the challenge draw me in Cause I want more Magandang hapon po mga climate advocates and welcome to our 26th episode of Klimatotohanan series entitled Going Beyond This Hope and Despair, Pinoy Documentary Filmmakers Sparking Action for the Environment. Mga, I'm very excited. no? Uh, I've missed hosting the show. I'm Amy Oliveras po. Ako po ang Luzon Coordinator of the Climate Reality Project Philippines and your host for this episode. I'm very happy that Uh, of course, yung mag-join sa akin as a co-host is no other than, from my hometown Baguio as well, of course, no other than climate reality leader Ethel Bakiran, a lecturer from University of the Philippines, Baguio. Mabuhay ka, Ethel. I'm very happy that you're here and co-hosting this special episode with me. Thank you po, Miss Amy. Thank you and sobrang um, grateful ko to have this opportunity to be co-hosting with you po. And... Thank you as well to my Kapwa Climate Reality Leaders, ayan, and sa ating mga viewers, ayan, na imbag na rabii, mga kaili. Okay, so in this episode, we will be highlighting the role of documentary films as a medium in communicating the urgency ano, of local environmental and climate issues. in the Philippines. Bilang ang mga pelikula naman ay may elemento na visual at auditory, buo yung experience natin bilang nanunood. At bilang mga Pinoy, mahilig na tayo sa pelikula. Okay? We often uh, associate these films, okay, mga pelikula, sa pop culture entertainment. But surprisingly, movie films can actually be a vehicle for learning, 
advocacy and change okay some of some of the notable documentary na examples include your emmy award winning series years of living dangerously okay before the flood ayan ni na kung saan si Leonardo DiCaprio ay nanalo, okay? And syempre, hindi natin malilimutan ang inconvenient truth, an inconvenient truth na napanood ko pa nung high school ako and which prominently featured former US Vice President and Nobel Laureate Al Gore. Environmental documentaries have the power to influence people to be catalysts of change. Masasabi kong bukod sa pag-aaral ng biology, what really got me into this field, science, conservation, are the things I've watched and the things that I fell in love with sa Discovery Channel, Nat Geo, okay? And the film itself creates dramatic messages and imagery that directly communicates and relates with the audience. In addition, documentaries have their way of raising awareness and encouraging action on the climate crisis. That is absolutely true, di ba? Kasi alam ko, obviously, I hope a lot of our viewers, especially those in Baguio, hello po sa mga kaibigan natin na nanonood from Baguio, and watching this, and also film enthusiasts that are watching this, they would agree that there's always power, di ba? And there's potential, especially for documentary films. Saka sobrang addict ako ng documentaries from whatever topic, no? Kasi it's adding a lot of, you know, um, information, a lot of, Uh, additional knowledge, especially for us, di ba, sa mga topics na hindi natin masyadong alam. And particularly, no, uh, addressing issues on the, uh, the climate crisis and the environment. So salagang uh, maganda, no, there's always the power and the potential with documentary films. And I hope uh, ito naman is a privilege, no, sobrang honored po kami, no, to really host this series. This is a special series in partnership with the Montañosa Film Festival or the MFF and worldwide teach in ayan so para sa ilan po no para sa kaalaman po ng lahat mm mff is a festival that is home to independent filmmakers to present their works on relevant social topics yeah today we will dive into the environmental documentary film category to recognize how documentaries depict environmental issues and climate justice obviously marami ka na ring napanood de ba FL and dami na nating napanood the environmental documentaries it's very interesting to 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 really see yung mga films in the philippines kasi obviously yung nakikita natin de ba usually very western one so having films in the philippines setup sobrang nakaka-excite niyan de ba tama tama po miss amy and tayo kasi we seldom see the potential of documentaries to stimulate positive attitude and influence change among the audience kasi lagi lang natin siyang nare-relate sa pop culture entertainment but not ni lang yon ni lang yon ang naibibigay sa atin ng documentary films kaya this episode can be an eye opener and hopefully maging eye opener siya sa ating lahat to how documentary films go beyond the borders of traditional communication methods thankfully Makakasama natin ngayon ang mga documentary filmmakers of the Environmental Documentary Film category for MFFF 2022 to discuss with us their motivations to create environment-related films and bits of their stories and learnings as well as they produce the film. Okay? But Before that, of course, meron tayong ilang paalala. We have a few reminders for everyone. To our viewers on Facebook, hello, we are giving away certificates of participation. Yan. So, just comment, okay, your name and where you're watching from. Again, your name and where you're watching from. Kung saan po kayo nanonood ngayon. Ayan. So, kung sa akin, Ethel Bakiran, Baguio, okay, don't forget to answer. Uh, the feedback form, which we will be sending in the comment section after this episode. Kaya dapat po, okay, uh, abangan natin yan hanggang sa huli. Okay, stay with us until the end of the stream so that you will be able to know 
the details of our klima totohanan question of the day, okay? Join this challenge kasi you will get a chance to win special prizes from us, okay? So, please stay with us until the end of this episode. Ayan. So, lastly, of course, our comment section is open for your questions. Diyan niyo po pwedeng itype ang inyong mga questions sa ating mga panauhin ngayon. And we will entertain that them during the open forum, okay? Ayan. That is correct. So excited to hear. Alam ko may mga friends na tayo na regular avid watcher. So hopefully makita natin ulit sila sa comment section and a whole lot more. So thank you so much to Ethel and of course welcome to all our Facebook viewers. Now let's proceed. Nako excited na ako to introduce our first guest for today's episode. Of course, alam ko uh, inaabangan na rin to especially ng mga mga nasa hopefully nasa Baguio at ang community ng Cordillera, 'di ba? With us, let's introduce our first guest for today's episode. Of course, we have Ray Mark Esteban Estel, an individual film director and a philanthropist from Agusan Sur. Ram was immersed in community volunteerism from 2013 to 2019, serving four flung and four villages of the Bangsamora region. Despite being new to the film, which started in 2020, he gained a master class scholarship from Mowell Fund Film Institute. His craft won awards and recognitions from film festivals like QC, Q Cinema, Docubata, Sundayag, Cinemalaya, Gawad Iskumbing Eskandor, and many more. Wow. Hi, Ram. Thank you so much for joining us to, this afternoon. Ako, very excited to meet you. Please greet our viewers and briefly answer. Meron na kaming opening question. No, pampainat lang. What makes filmmaking a powerful artwork for climate action? Go ahead, Ram. Hi, Ma'am Amy. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for this invitation. And uh, just to answer the first question, no? so it's very important that um, art forms like films could could really speak up and influence people. So, marami talaga visual people, not just visuals, even people who are here. So, and uh, siguro hindi man nila naiintindan anong nangyayari, but through films, it is it will be more na mas maintindihan nila, mas maklaro sa kanila. Especially as documentary filmmakers, we really do um, um, have case studies, characters, and samples on the grassroots level na makikita po talaga nila na, oo oh, pala, no? ganito pala yung um, worldview, ganito yung perspective of a person who has, um, who has this challenge napiktado din talaga sa climate change. So that's the power of film for me. Maraming maraming salamat, Ram. At, at gusto ko yung sinabi ni, ni Mr. Ram es Estael na empathy. Yun yung dinadala mm -hmm. ng mga documentary films natin. Okay? Uh, thank you, Ram, for that. Thank you. Thank you. And for our next guest, let us call on... Geraldine Lusterio. Tama po ba ang aking pag-pronounce? Ayan. She is a third-year college student and she is taking Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy at St. Louis University, a motivated and detail-oriented individual who is eager to join the MF MFF 2022 short environmental documentary competition. Hello, Geraldine. Oh, please join Hello, us here po. and say hi to our viewers and also share your thoughts. Hello, same ayan, same po okay. with, with uh, Mr. Ram. Um, what makes filmmaking a powerful art form for climate action? Um, for me po, ah, kasi usually, pag sinasabing climate change, ang unang papasok sa isip ng tao is yung mga environmental activists. Mm -hmm. Pero usually, um, kami, as a filmmakers, activists din kami. So basically, mm -hmm. pag sa mga activists, usually sila yung, yung bosses ng mga tao. Ngayon, kami naman po, as a filmmakers, kami naman po yung mata, mata mm -hmm. ng tao. So yun po. Piling ko yun. Thank you so Thank much you. for that, Geraldine. Ang ganda, no? Sabi niya, the eyes, no? Talagang yung mga filmmakers, they are the eyes, di ba? And that's a form of speaking up, di ba? It's a form of activism for them. And maraming salamat. You're very young, no? Talagang bata pa lang, nakikita mo na yung passion. And we really are very excited to talk to, to you 
uh, a little later on. So maraming salamat sa'yo, Geraldine. All right, Thank moving you. on to our next guest. Uh, all right, so we have Charlene Fabes and Baron Paolo Aquino. Bo- both are fresh graduates and aspiring filmmakers. They consider their MFF nominations as an opportunity to gain experience in learning in producing engaging outputs to raise environmental awareness among the people. Magandang magandang hapon. Hello. And yan, how are you? I know you had some issues of power kanina. Yeah. Buti bumalik na. Oo nga, maraming salamat Charlene for being here. And similar to our uh, other guest, what makes, you know, answer this question and what makes filmmaking a powerful art form for climate action? Uh, kasi po, I think na um, our, like, the people's practices, our attitudes and beliefs and thinking, they're all molded by the things that we see or the, the things that, yeah, that we receive. So, for, for us po, um, the documentary is like an effective tool in shaping and helping raise people's awareness and hopefully their attitude then towards these environmental uh, concerns. Yun po. Maraming maraming salamat, uh, Charlene. Okay, Thank so... You. Ayan, so uh, I like that. Oo, tama. Aminin man natin o hindi, mga nakikita natin, mga naririnig natin, napapanood natin lalo, they shape us, yung mga decisions natin, and what we, whatever na, na, na perspectives natin, na mold nga naman yan ng ating mga napapanood. Maraming salamat, Charlene and Baron. And now let me introduce our last but not the least guest for today's episode. Okay? Shemen Padua, a proud Igorota who is a graduate of BS Agriculture major in entomology from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. Ayan, so the study of insects, diba? entomology. She is the director of photography for Salidumay which won fourth place best in cinematography during the second Roshani International Short Film Festival in 2021. Also, Shemen is the cinematographer for Pengasan, Pengas, Pengsasan, I'm sorry. Yes, Pengsasan, thank you po. Which won Kapwa Award during the first Montañosa Film Festival 2020. Wow. Please join us here, po, Ms. Shemen, and thank you Hi. for being with us in this episode. So, you may greet po ang ating mga kaili. And what, ganun din po, uh, the question is, what makes filmmaking a powerful art form for climate action? Okay. Um, naimbag na malam tayo amin. Kapag kita gabag yung ag buya. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, documentary is a very powerful form of uh, film because of the imparting of knowledge, the information that we are giving to our uh, viewers, especially those that are not accessible to them. You know, the, the very simplest people that we don't often see, if we, if we uh, directors or filmmakers were able to uh, get to them and show them how life is in these people, you know, and to show them that they are very simple, yet they do extraordinary things. You know, it's an eye-opener. Maraming salamat po, Ms. Shemen. At mm-hmm. bilang nasa field din ng science, na nararamdaman ko po yung urgency ninyo na i-communicate yung mga nakikita nyo. Ayun. So, thank you so much. Ayan Thank you for that. Oh, nga, naka-relate ka doon, Ethel, di ba? And you have that something common with, with Shemen, di ba? So maraming salamat, Shemen. Indeed, Tomaya, no, you said about adding, you know, um, something that's adding more information and, you know, opening our eyes to the realities. Kasi yan naman yung ganda ng documentaries, di ba? That's different from a common film, a popular film, di ba? Yun yung beauty ng documentaries. It's sharing to us what the realities are. And the good thing is about Philippines, no? Yung pina- binibigyang mulat natin is about the Philippines as well as climate change. So talagang yan yung dalawang favorite topic natin, di ba? Dito sa climate reality. So thank you so much to all of our guests. Excited to learn about your films. Excited to hear from you more later on. And syempre, no? 
umpisa pa lang po yan, di ba? Narinig na natin ng ating mga speakers. Nako, medyo malaman na ang usapan natin, Ethel, mamaya pa, no? So, mas magiging, mas malaliman pa, di ba? Ang usapan natin mamaya. But before we do that, before we proceed, no? Siyempre, importante sa atin to. Ang segment na ito, very important po sa amin. Mag-shoutout muna tayo, siyempre, hmm. sa ating mga kaibigan sa Facebook. Uh, we'd like to greet, of course, our Facebook viewers. Hi to Leia, Joyce, Gahutas, watching from Kalabanga, Camarines Sur. Nako, uh, Bicol pala ito. Hello to you, Leia. To, Je- to Jen Rose, Agtay of General Tia City, Cavite. To Robert Jason Monreal from Sipokot, Kamsur. Ay, nako, may mga friendship tayo sa Kamsur, ah. Good afternoon po, Maria Michelle Ann I. Perez, kompletong-kompleto, from Batanga City. Hello to Diana Way, watching from Nueva Ecija. To Jasmine Eugenio from Valenzuela. City, Manuel Paulo Agokido from Taba- Tabaco, Albay. To Johnny James De Santos, watching from Tondo, Manila. To Resi Joy Duermo from Camigin. Hello! Si Ariel to si Resi. Hi, hi, hi Resi. Mm, hi, Resi. Yes, yeah, si Resi, di ba? Andy Padernila, good afternoon to you. To, to Jekka Garcia from Batangas. To Rose, Rose V. Nena, Mernado, watching from Palo Leite. Hello, hello po. Maayong buntag. Joanne E. Donato from Miyagao, Iloilo. Ayan. Hmm. To Miss Maria Isobel, Oka, watching from the Pitan. Oh, CRL din to, si Isobel. Hello. Hmm. Jekka Garcia. Naku, napati ko na ulit si Jekka twice na to. Hello to Jekka <laughs> Garcia from Batangas. Maria Roslyn Ferrer from National Children's Hospital. Hello po sa inyo. Jem Marion from Batangas. And to Carl Alex Naurito from Tagum City. Hello po. Mamaya po, magkikita-kita po po tayo no, sa online chat. Kaya, Message lang po kayo ng message at mag, mag-type lang po kayo ng gusto nyo i-message sa ating comment section. So maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat for joining our 26th episode. Grabe 26th episode na po ito. You can still invite and tag your friends para po makasama rin natin sila today. Sana po yung mga nanonood sa Baguio, no? supportahan natin ang episode na ito no? kasi napaka-relevant at napakaganda po na magiging discussion. If you have any questions po during the discussion, feel free to type it in our comment section. So we can ask them to our speakers later on. Diba, Ethel? Yes, Amy. And finally, eto na, eto na tayo. This is our opportunity to talk now with our guest speakers and to discuss their documentary film entries for the environmental documentary film category of MFF 2022. So to start the discussion, let us have Ram who wrote and directed Baha Satumana, a short film that depicts the devastating impact of flash flood to communities throughout the years. Alam ko marami sa ating makaka-relate dito. And for us to have an overview of the film, let us first watch the teaser. Yan po yung ilog na yan. Maliit lang po yan pag normal. Pero po pag ano. Ito po yung ilog. Yan po normal po siya pag maliit. Pagka ano po medyo malakas yung ulan. Medyo siya malaki po. Pag naman po may bagyo, ayan. Hanggang sa lumubog na po yung mga bahay na yan. Pag nag-aalam siya ng 60, medyo ma, ano na po, malaki-laki na po siya. Yung po, yung number na yun. Yan yung pinaka-ano namin. Signal po namin. Kapag ka, ano po, malaki-malaki na po, 
Yung tumutunog po yung ano na yun, sa taas ng tulay, yung alarm niya po. Kailangan po umalis na kayo dito. Noong unang baha, dito kami nagtayo ng kubo-kubo. Siguro may git isang buwan din yung kubo namin kasi yung bahay namin na wash up. Kaya dito kami nagtayo-tayo po ng kubo. Noong undoy po yun. Tapos yung unisys naman po, yung bahay namin nag, ano, nag po sa mga putik. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Very, very nice snippet pa lang po yan, ha? Teaser pa lang po. Ako, ako excited ako mapanood pa yan lalo. And thank you so much to, to Ram, of course, for sharing this masterpiece with us. So, you know, yung reality talaga, alam naman po natin yan, no? the reality of frequencies of frequencies and intensities of typhoons, obviously, is an impact of climate change. Diba? Yan po yung reality. At hindi po yan nangyayari, hindi lang po sa tumana. Alam po natin na nangyayari, nangyayari yan across the different countries of our across the different cities, across the Philippines, di ba? Bilang tayo po ay isang climate vulnerable country. Now, very, very excited to know more about this, Ram. Uh, alam ko, ito ay talagang mula sa, sa, ano, sa pawis at, ano, no, at hirap, blood, set and tears for you. But we're very interested to know more about this. Um, obviously, you're the best person to ask these questions. Can you share us to, can you just tell, share to us, you know, what are, if you can share to us more about this film, what is Baha, sa Tumana, all about, and basically what motivated you really to create this film? Hello po, uh, again, good afternoon. So Baha sa Tumana is a documentary about the life of uh, what ha what happened in uh, Tumana, Marikina. So Tumana is a barangay in Marikina City. So if, if we've heard of Marikina City, siguro sa Metro Manila, agad siya yung binabaha, of course, um, biophysical, biophysical na location niya is talagang ang tubig talaga ay dumadaloy sa, uh, from mga tubig from Rizal down to this barangay. So, um, Tumana is a community na andun po yung malaking river. So, andun po yung binabaha agad. So, for 30 decades, imagine for 30 decades, Lagi po siyang binabaha. Uh, if you would see the first na, na snippet sa, uh, sa trailer. So parang 1988 pa na ang bagyong onsang the major floods. Imagine 1988 uh, and then 2009 bagyong undoy uh, 100,000. Grabe, sobrang ang daming namatay. And then bagyong ulis is just this pandemic. And so those three major floods at marami pang flash floods ay nagpabago talaga sa mga kaisipan ng mga tao how how do how would they respond how would they um, um, cope with the challenge of climate change somehow um, in, dito natin makikita eh kung ano bang ginagawa ng gobyerno eh, especially sa um, local government and even in the barangay so paano ba binago ng mga baha ang pananaw ng mga tao at mga buhay nila. So, I am motivated to do this film because personally, I live in, in Tumana, Marikina. So, there was a time last year na umabot talaga sa punto na nag-second alarm bago lang po akong dipat doon. And then I really saw the kids crying. Uh, doon, nakita ko na, why not document this kind of film? So, while doing the film, so hindi ko naman dinadalangin na magkabaha ulit para ma-document ko lang, no? Pero when I saw them, I really have this heart na, oo nga, ano, ha, paano, paano binago nung bata pa tapos lumaki na, so parang nasanay na talaga sa baha, alam na nilang gagawin, alam na nila paano mag-evacuate. So ganun na yung mindset, ganun na yung setup ng mga tao doon kung may mga kung may mangyayari. So that's uh, my motivation of doing this year and how did they cope with the challenge of the, the changes of time in the climate during those 30 years na laging binabaha ang Tumana Marikina. And thank you so much for that and sh thank you for sharing how it started. Obviously, you were there firsthand. Sabi mo nga, experience mo, you've, in, you've been in that type of 
situation and I know a lot of our kababayans ganun din, 'di ba? Naranasan mm-hmm. din nila, alam nila yung experience, alam nila yung kwento and then they can totally relate to to the story, 'di ba? Of Baha sa Tumana. My next question is really about were there any lessons basically that you've learned from, you know, doing this film? May mga surprises ka bang nalaman na na na, na discover maybe about yourself about the the topic in itself during the production? So ang ginagawa po ng mga community people is napataas po sila ng mga bahay. Kasi nga, kung problema lang sa basura, ang, ang pro, kung problema lang sa basura, pwede naman masolusyonan. Pero hindi, sobrang parang malaki ang problema po ito na nag-change po talaga ang panahon. Eh, itong mga bagyo na dumalating sa Pilipinas, hindi po natin yan mapipigilan. And of course, ang mga bagyong ito ay magdadala talaga ng mga malalaking baha pa. So of course we're not praying for that we're not anticipating pero of we we really need to take actions on those personally I really learned that um ganito na talaga yung movement natin and we really need to move with a uh, co- with a government hand on hand in hand hindi lang problema to ng gobyerno eh it's problema din natin to as human being as human kaya na hindi natin isisisi sa gobyerno kung meron mang kasakuna ang mangyari sa atin kasi of course they're also doing their best para masalba tayo during the times of baha and ako personally yun yung natutunan ko na um, talagang kailangan na natin na uh, gumawa ng mga pamamaraan personally at whole, holistic din sa whole community para, para walang walang mamamatay sa panahon ng sakuna So it's just that these are the, uh, the 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 changes of time, the changes of season, and we need to go with this because I I I believe then at ayipa punta yun. Siguro kung meron man tayong magagawa ngayon, I know meron naman tayong magagawa. Pero of course, in our little ways, in my little way also as a documentary. So that's my part. Um, na hinahinay kahit maliit. So makaka-contribute in, in climate actions. So, yun. Thank you so much for that. No? Alam ko, yung, yung, yung film, the film in itself, ang ganda ng messaging, and then sabi mo nga kanina, it's really more about opening the eyes, especially yung, yung relevant parties, relevant stakeholders, really look at this issue, diba? and find solutions, sustainable solutions. Diba? Kasi sabi mo nga kanina, since uh, 30 years ago, problema na siya, di ba? So hopefully this is the best time to really you know look at the issue. May next may next steps ka pa ba? Meron ba kang makikitang sequel for Bahasa to Mana? May may ganung something in the works ka ba in the future, Ram, just to to cap this off. I was really waiting of course in in the one siguro praying for Baha, no? Pero it's really good <laughs> to re Mahirap kasi na I'm just taking our archives of the videos of what ha- what took place. Personally, I really want to, since I just transferred into Mana Marikina, so gusto kong um, ako mismo makakadocument uh, ng mga bagay na yun. Maybe this would um, create more uh, footages and more uh, yun, uh, visualized pa, uh, maging um, visually compelling pa talaga yung films. However, of course, in the span of time, yung challenge to do films in this span of time. So, yun ako naman ang best ko the story really relate the story on what's happening sa baha sa tumana sa marikina so yun lang thank you so much Ram, for sharing that we're very excited to know more about this guys now hopefully you guys watch this film alam ko open to tama ba if you can invite them ram to 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 for the audience para i-support kanila is there a way for you for them to support you ano ba yung yung ano call for action to to our viewers at this point hello everyone i just want to invite you to watch Baha sa Tumana in Montañoz sa Film Festival 2022. So we also have um, live streaming and we also have on-site screening on in Baguio City, of course, that's in Baguio. So please, um, with, with all the films, ang gaganda po ng lahat ng documentary, iba, iba po yung flavors ng mga documentary nandito. Siguro next po, eh, they will also explain their side. Please watch all documentary na mapapabago po talaga sa pananaw natin and how we Could, could we act on this climate change? So, maraming salamat po sa pagtangkilik ng mga document, documentary like this. And uh, I hope na you will learn sa documentary namin, Baha sa Tuma. Maraming salamat. Maraming maraming salamat, Ram. At 
gusto ko yung ginamit mo yung pagiging witness mo to take action para ipakita kung ano rin yung nararanasan ninyo. Ako po ay galing sa Tugigaraw at dito lang po ako sa Baguio, nag-aral at nagtrabaho. At nasasabi ko po na napakalaki ng epekto ng Baguio kahit pagkatapos. Kailangan mong maglinis, kailangan mong ayusin, makikita mo lahat ng mga nasira. And it fills your heart with sadness as well as yung helplessness at at talagang we look forward to this documentary and kung ano yung mae-elicit niya sa amin na viewers okay kung ano naman yung part namin sa climate action sa climate space na to uh, bilang nasa field ng science dito kami nahihirapan kung paano makipag-communicate na kaya nagkakaganito dahil sa pagtaas ng um, CO2 bla 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 pero dahil sa film na to makikita makikita ka agad kung ano yung epekto at ma surely makaka-relate ang marami sa mga Pinoy so maraming maraming salamat and that was an eye opener for all of us so please do do watch this film and all the other films sa MFF 2022. Ayan, nasa Athletic Bowl lang po yan. Okay, so nadadaanan po natin yan parate pagdadaan tayo ng Burnham. Okay, so this documentary film showed the realities. Okay, okay man yan o hindi at malamang dito talagang hindi. The realities na nararanasan ng mga communities that is beyond uh, the knowledge ng mga karamihan na hindi nakaka-experience ng pagbaha. Okay. So before we proceed with our next speaker, again, I would just like to remind everyone that you can now send your questions on the comment section. Please do send them kasi i-entertain po natin yan during the open forum. Okay? Ayan. So ang susunod nating speaker, ang susunod, susunod nating guest ay si Ms. Geraldine Lusterio, the writer and director of Anya Kinan Mutattay, a film that reimagines food consumption through paint artworks. Here is our teaser. Kumbaga. So wait, isa ka din doon? Oo. <laughs> Noon. Thank you. 
Wow. Ang, ang ganda ng imagery. Kakaiba, na-appreciate ko yung pag-iba-iba ng color gradient. Ayun, so maraming maraming salamat for that. Teaser pa lang, mapapaisip ka na talaga. What caught my attention was the line, Are you pig satisfied or are you Socrates satisfied? Minsan talaga, we take food for granted. Katulad nung sinabi kanina, hindi na lang yung walang makain. Minsan, we take food for granted just because it is accessible for us. Kaya I'm very excited to talk with Ms. Geraldine para explain sa atin ang kanyang film. Okay. Anya kinan mutatay. So, Geraldine, please walk us through what this film is about and what has been your motivation para gawin ito. So, hi everyone. So, yung film ko is Anya kinan mutatay, which means in Filipino, anong kinain mo kanina? So, basically, yung sa... Yung kanina, nakita nyo yung video, yung pa iba-ibang kulay na effect. Usually, yun po yung nagre-represent ng climate change. Like, in every kain natin, naapektuhan yung climate change. So, yun po yun. So, basically po yung film ko is about food consumption. And like, if you feature nyo po isang college student, and at the same time, um, painter po siya. So, dito po sa film ko, yung ginawa ko dito is, Parang tatlong part po siya. Um, Present po siya in a dialectical manner. Wherein my first is yung thesis, um, anti-thesis, tapos synthesis. So yung po kanina, nabanggit pig satisfied, Socrates dissatisfied. Usually, um, typically po, yun po yung title ng artworks. So tatlong artworks po yan na magre-represent. So yun sa first thesis po, ang title po nun is Gut Feeling. Dito po, forgiven tayo. Like, nature naman talaga nating mga tao na kumain. So, forgiven pa dito sa stage na to. Ito yung lowest stage. Tapos, yung second stage naman po is yung, it is entitled, um, pig satisfied. Dito na po nagkakaroon ng conflict. Ito na po yung anti-thesis. Wherein, dito na yung sumasobra na tayo. Hindi na natin na ano yung desires natin, yung cravings natin. So, nagiging parang baboy na po tayo. So, tapos yung last, synthesis. Dito naman na po yung Socrates na satisfied. So, dito na yung turning point. Like, oo, oh, okay, satisfied tayo. Dito na natin yung papasok. Oh, dito na po papasok yung critical thinking na kailangan hindi dapat natin pairalin yung cravings natin. Like, okay lang na madissatisfied yung cravings natin. At least nag-isip tayo. Like, at least naging mas sensitive tayo sa paligid natin. Like, hindi na tayo kain ng kain. Tapos, yung film din po kasi dito, is, it is specific, um, specifically about overconsumption ng fast food meals. So, yun po siya. Kasi, usually, yung fast food meals, oh, masarap, mabilis. Pero kasi yung packaging, dun tayo nakakano eh. Dun po siya, dun nagkakaroon ng mga plastic waste na super dami. Tapos, yung motivation naman po nito is, um, nung bata pa kasi ako, napansin ko na, like, sabi nila, um, ang solution sa climate change is, lagi na lang, usually sinasabi na, recycling daw. Pero dito, as I grew up, na, natanong ko na po si self ko na, bakit ang dami pa rin basura kung recycling is enough? So, dito na po mapasok yung tanong na, enough pa ba yung pag-recycle natin? So, yun po yung susagutin ng film. So, panoorin niyo po yun. Ayan. Ayan. Thank you. Parang kumbaga sa tingin ko, para siyang prevention is better than cure. Um, i-prevent mo, huwag ka nalang magtapon. Ayan. So, tama, tama. Maganda yun. Totoo din na nakaka-addict nga naman ang fast food, lalo na para sa amin na at para sa mga estudyante, mm-hmm. di ba, na talagang may exams, kailangan mag-aral, may mga deadlines, punta ka na lang sa fast food, wag ka na lang magluto. Ayan. So, gusto ko yon na makamasa. Sino ba naman ang hindi makaka-relate sa pagkain, di ba? Ayan. So, gustong-gusto ko siya. Um, dito sa paggawa ng film, may mga 
natutunan ka ba ng mga lessons habang ginagawa siya tungkol sa sarili mo or tungkol din sa subjects na pinag-aaralan mo sa film? Mm, marami, marami po siya. Mahal mo, mas marami nakakaiyak. Charot. Pero yun po, um, feeling ko, ang pwede kong ma-share is um, yung sa film ko po kasi, na-realize ko na hindi po siya um, disclaimer. Pwede pa spoil, charot. Pero yung sa film ko po kasi, hindi po siya, ano, hindi siya imposing. Like, hindi niya namang sinasabi na oy ganito, stop mo nang kumain ng ganito, ganyan, kasi mm-hmm. nakaka-affect ko. Hindi po siya imposing. Like, gusto ko lang ipakita na nasa inyo pa rin. Mm-hmm. Like, parang ano lang ako, parang pinakita ko lang na masama mm-hmm. yung ganito, ganyan. So, nasa inyo pa rin. So, gusto ko pa rin pong ilagay yung yung freedom ng mga tao. So, sa kanila pa rin nakasalalay. So, yun naman as a role of filmmakers. Hindi mo naman siya pwedeng impose yung mga tao. Um, for me, I believe, pag in order to spark a change, um, di mo pwedeng i-dictate yung tao. Hindi tayo dictator. Eh. Mm-hmm. So, i-ignite mo lang sila. Like, i- mm-hmm. Yun nga, sabi meron kasi pong sinabi yung philo teacher namin nun. Philosophy teacher namin, sabi niya, you cannot really change the mindset of people just by dictating it. Um, sabi niya, unless you destroy their belief. So, dito po mm-hmm. sa film na to is, it um it tries to destroy a belief yun nga yung all beliefs na recycling daw is the key wherein hindi na nga kasi siya enough so yun lang na may pinapakita ng film din destroy niya yun kailangan may isa pang principle na dapat nating sundin and yun yung reconsidering our food consumption so yun i see kaya nga pala may socrates very ano pala um philosophically driven ayon yung film so thank you Geraldine very uh, deep yung kanyang pag-explain okay very technical as well but also gusto ko yung ending statement na free will free will pa rin yung ini-import niya sa kanyang viewers maraming maraming salamat for that thank you so much Geraldine yeah ako ako rin eh medyo When I was watching the teaser, medyo controversial, no? Medyo mm. na-excite ka, medyo na, na, na-excite yung senses mo because you started talking about food consumption and then later on, may uncovering pa of issues on plastic use, etc. So talagang very interesting siya. And that's actually the beauty of documentaries. It's challenging, di ba? Yung paniniwala natin, yung beliefs natin. I've, 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 I've watched a lot of documentaries kaya nag-shift ako ng diet ko eh. Kasi ganun ka-powerful minsan ng documentaries, di ba? And when we relate the topic, when we relate the topic of plastics to climate change, obviously, buong life cycle ng plastics, hmm. carbon intensive yan, di ba? So alam natin na very, very dangerous yan sa ating environment. Kaya uh, ang ganda nung, ano, nung interplay, di ba? Kala mo, food consumption going into biodegradables and biodegradables recycling. Ako. Uh, ayaw na ayaw ko yung topic na plastics. Kaya kaya sobra akong na ano, na intriga, na intriga dito sa ano, dito sa film na to. So, thank you so much for that Geraldine. If you can maybe invite our viewers to support you, paano ba pa, paano ka ba, paano ba sila makaka-support sa or how can they connect with you uh, if ever? Ayun, hi everyone. So, we are inviting you to watch our films, lahat po, lahat ng documentary narrative. Just visit, eh, pati pa yung mobile, actually. Um, just visit the Mantanya sa Film Festival page po. Andun na po lahat. Ipupunta na lang kayo, manonood na lang kayo. Yun na lang po. So, yun. Correct, lang diba? Wow. Thank you so much, Geraldine. Kasi, yeah, tama, no? Documentaries, you have mobile films, you also have short films, I believe, no? So, supportahan po natin sila. And, yes. you know, after hearing, di ba, after hearing what Geraldine mentioned, it's all about perspective, about mind change, di ba? It's really how you, ano, eh, perspective yan, paano mo panoorin yung pelikula, di ba? Mm-hmm. Pwede ang focus mo is about food consumption, pwede ang focus mo is about plastics, di ba, single-use plastics. Ang ganda nung, ano, it elicits a lot of emotions, a lot of reactions. So, maraming salamat to you, Geraldine. And thank you so much. I look forward to having another conversation with you later on, di ba, Ethel? Yes, yes. Tamang-tama po, Miss Amy. And tama yun. Very uh, relative, very subjective yung makukuha nating messages from each of these films. Kaya mas magandang, mas marami din tayong pinapanood. Ayan. So, at this point, we have some reminders from the Climate Reality Project Philippines and its partners. Ayan. So, the Climate Reality Project is inviting you 
to the fifth installment of our Klima Pandayan workshop series. And now it's about eco-waste happening coming April 4. So this virtual workshop will feature eco-friendly stores and their practices on eco-friendly packaging. Ayan, kaka, kaka, uh, we have just talked with Geraldine and yung food consumption practices natin, di ba? So, tune in to our Facebook page to know how you can register. Correct. Naku, excited ako dyan. Sana maka-join kayo dyan. Especially those who are manifesting zero waste. Lifestyle, yes. nako, sobrang excited niyan. Baka magkita tayo dyan, mga kapatid. So, we're also looking forward to this Klima Pandayan episode. Open po ito, not mm-hmm. just for climate reality leaders, but also, syempre, sa ating mga viewers. All right. Yes. So, last February 28 po, of course, baka po nabasa nyo na rin po, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, released another report dubbed as Climate Change 2020 Impacts Adaptation and Vulnerability. The impacts of climate change that are described in this report are the lived realities of the world's most vulnerable communities, Southeast Asian countries, kasama po tayo dito. No? In line with this, the youth cluster of the Climate Reality Project Philippines in partnership with their counterparts at the Climate Reality Indonesia penned a statement calling for urgent and just climate resilient development. So we invite our organizations and other individuals, mga kaibigan, no, to co-sign this statement and join us as we call for a livable future for all. You may access the statement by scanning the QR code or by going to this link, https yan, backslash tinyurl.com slash c dash call for CRD 2022. Ayan, nakalagay sa ating screen. So sana po, kung gusto niya po pong malaman no, kung ano po yung impacts ng climate change, particularly po sa ating bansa, sana po, supportahan niyo kami dyan. Alright, so, ang next pa po dyan, meron pa pala, sa darating po na eleksyon, ano-ano kayang platforma tungkol sa kalikasan at pagbabago ng klima ang nais nating ipaglaban sa susunod po na administrasyon. Ako, kay, kabilang po ang issue na ito sa mga bagay, na kailangan pong tugunan ng susunod na leader nako very critical po kasi ang mga nalala ang ano mga susunod ng mga taon para po sa climate change kaya po kasunod ng mga panawagang ito para sa angkop na transition patungo sa renewable energy likas lamang po ang pamamaraan ng transportasyon pagtataguyod ng kilusang zero waste pagpapanatili ng biodiversity at kalikasan pagtugon sa problema ng pagbabagong klima at pagkamit ng climate justice na po po. Alinso na dito ang book PH at ang mga miyembro po ng hashtag PH vote at hashtag courage on no lockdown on rights ay nag-organisa ng serye po ng mga town hall o pulong. Naku guys, interested kayo. Interested talaga ako dito. Tinatawag po itong hashtag atin ang Pilipinas town hall. Dito po natin pag-uusapan ang iba't ibang issue na hinaharap ng bansa natin at ano po kaya ang magiging panindigan ng mga kandidato bilang pagkapangulo? Kaya nga po, ang pang-apat na town hall, inorganisa po ito ng Move PH sa pagkikipagtulungan ng UNESCO at co-hosted po ng kalikasan na Climate Reality Project Philippines, Philippine Movement for Climate Justice, LILAC, Evon Foundation, ay magaganap na po ito ngayong Mars 26. Guys, this is the, this Saturday, 2 p.m. Tatadakayan po dito ang kalikasan at pagbabago ng klima at ano pa pong pwedeng bigyang pansin ng ating mga susunod na pinuno. Uh, ano-ano po ba ang mga issues na kalikasan at pagbabago ng klima na gusto pong aksyonan ng susunod nating mga pinuno? Sumali po kayo, open po ito sa lahat ngayon pong March 26, 2 p.m. Lalabas din po ito ng Rappler at sa ating mga online pages sa lahat po ng ating mga partners. Kaya po sana makajoin kayo mga kapatid. This is a very relevant topic and discussion Nalalapit yes. na po ang eleksyon. So sama-sama po tayo dyan. Aside from that, of course, meron pa rin po kaming gustong i-share sa inyo. Um, of course, marami po tayong initiatives and events from our advocacy partners ng ating Klimatotohanan webcast. Para po sa ating mga viewers, mula po sa gitnang Luzon. Hello po mga karehyon. Narito po ang ilang paalala mula sa CLTV36 na isa po sa aming mga official media partners. Take full advantage of the power of TV and digital media when you advertise with CLTV. Through CLTV, you can now have your very own TV commercial for your business at a reasonable cost. 
not only is your business authenticated by a reliable and trusted TV station, you can also reach our captive audience through CLTV's various digital media platforms at the same time. Contact us to avail of these exciting advertising opportunities. Ayan. Ayan, di ba? Exciting. Yes. Hello po sa mga taga CLTV 36. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. Mabuhay po. Ayan. At inaanyayahan naman tayo ng Earth UST para sa kanilang Environmental Summit for Youth Action. Okay? So, ito po, it is a two-day event. Okay? It, and it is organized by Earth UST, the premier environmental organization of the University of Santo Tomas, wherein delegates and environmentalists from different universities and colleges gather to become an avenue for the youth in the promotion of environmental awareness. Ayan. So abangan po natin ang announcement mula sa Earth UST sa kanilang Facebook page. Ayan. Okay, so sa pagdiriwang naman ng unang taon ng Philippine Association of Environmental Science Students, okay, at pakikipagtulungan kasama ang The Earth Movement. Ayan, inaanyayahan namin kayong umatend sa Pantas. Experts talk on environmental research in the Philippine setup. Okay, so ito ay gaganapin kada huling Sabado ng buwan. Ayan, sa ika-4 or 5 ng hapon. Uh, 4 to 5 ng hapon. So via Zoom po ito at Facebook Live. So very, very much accessible siya. Makikinig at magtatanong. Uh, makinig tayo at magtanong tayo sa mga imbitadong panauhing tagapagsalita. Kung paano nga ba maging isang environmental scientist sa Pilipinas. So ito po ay bukas sa high school, undergraduate, post uh, graduate and graduate students na may plano, may balak kumuha ng or kumukuha din ng kursong agham, pangkapaligiran o related degrees dito tulad ng environmental management, environmental engineering, environmental planning at iba pa. Okay? So, maaring mag-register sa link na nakalagay dyan. So, ilalagay din siya sa comments para makakuha ng meeting link para dito. Okay? So, sama-sama nating tuklasin ang malawak na posibilidad para sa mga future Pinoy environmental scientists. Correct, no? So excited ako dyan. No? Sana marami pong sumali dyan. So we're also very happy to share, na kung dami pa nating announcement, no? We're also mm -hmm. happy to share that the Climate Reality Project Philippines is supporting the Youth Climate Agenda 2022 spearheaded by, of course, our Climate Atoharan partner, Youth Advocates for Climate Action Philippines or YACA. Malapit na po ang May 2022 national elections and as the climate crisis continues to worsen, we need leaders who will take on the task of pushing for a sustainable people and planet-centered Philippines for current and future generations of Filipinos. The Youth Climate Agenda 2022 serves as a challenge to our candidates to put just and green leadership at the heart of their campaigns. To learn more about this, visit Yakap's Facebook page at facebook.com slash Philippines. Ayan, ako. Uh, excited ako para dyan. Kaya naman po, ngayon pong March 25, ayan, samahan din po natin ang yakap sa kanilang global climate strike. With the elections coming up in May in the Philippines, the youth, naku, ang mga kabataan po dapat ay magsama-sama to March, hashtag March for Climate Leadership. It's crucial that we elect leaders who will prioritize hashtag people, not profit. Uulitin po natin, no? prioritize people, not profit. Para po malaman kung paano kayo makakasali Isitahin po ang yakap.org slash strike. Yes. Now, under construction, okay, deconstructing home improvement projects and exploring sustainable alternatives in Quezon City households. This is a non uh, this is a nation building community engagement project by University of the Philippines Diliman students. Okay, so this project 
aims to impart knowledge on sustainable home improvement methods and create an online community where participants can share their best home sustainability practices. Ayan. So this webinar, okay, this is um, this initiative will be held ngayong Saturday, March 26, 2022. You can mark your calendars from 2 to 4 p.m. Okay, so ito po, this is an event open to everyone from the Philippines. But of course, it is most um, preferable if you are a resident of Quezon City or a student of any UP constituent university. Ayan, so my link po dyan. And interested individuals may sign up okay, sa, sa registration link na yan. There will also be a raffle draw where 10 lucky participants will win cash prizes. So for more information, visit nyo lang po ang kanilang Facebook page. Ayan, so www.facebook.com slash undr.cns. Ayan. Thank you for that, FL. Naku, meron pa. Together, let's hashtag make the shift towards a more sustainable lifestyle. Walang Plastikan is a month-long campaign founded by civic conscious students aiming to promote lesser use and reliance on single-use products as well as recommended eco-friendly alternatives to these everyday consumables. To materialize this goal, ayan, Walang Plastikan is raising funds to provide eco-friendly alternatives to low-income families of Barangay Poblacion of Alaminos, Pangasinan. Hello po sa mga taga-Pangasinan. Samahan po natin ang kanilang online protest sa March 21, infographic series sa March 23 to April 13, at ang kanilang fundraiser for Barangay Poblacion sa March 21 to April 20. Para po sa ibang impormasyon, Bisitahin lamang po ang kanilang Facebook page, facebook.com slash walangplastikanproject slash, yan, slash, slash na pala. Ayan, uh, <laughs> details are on the screen. Okay. Ayan, so kanina po, meron po tayong naganap na opening ceremony ng Meteorological Week. Ayan, napaka very tongue-twisting Meteorological Week with this year's theme, Early Warning, Early Action. As we highlight the critical role of early warning systems and early action as an adaptive measure for climate change. Ayan, so kanina nakita natin yung mga baha. Ayan, so this, this is a very relevant topic as well. Marami pa pong mga activities ang naghihintay ngayong meteorological week. Ayan, so for registration, ayan, so merong link dyan, uh, tinyurl.com slash metweek dash registration okay so pwede din nating i-follow ang kanilang facebook page met collab for the latest updates on met collab and met week 2022 yan so sa buwan naman ng mayo okay ayan malapit na malapit na so sa buwan ng mayo isa alang-alang din ang kalikasan sa Pagboboto, okay? So with the nearing 2022, po 2022 polls, it is important that we get to multi-sectorally discuss issues that the next set of officials will be handling. Unfortunately, we are yet to hear more in-depth conversations, discourses, okay, when it comes to environmental issues. And so that said, Pagsibol brings you Green Thumb. Ayan. So, this is a podcast series that tackles timely political and environmental climate in the Philippines. So, through this, we aim to bring more awareness to everybody as we empower nature. So, visit nyo po tong Pagsibol okay, sa kanilang Facebook page sa facebook.com slash pagsibolorg to know more about Green Thumb. Okay. Correct, no? Ang ganda, Ethel, no? When you think about a lot of opportunities for discussion, discourse mm. about elections and related yes. to the environment. Ang dami, ang dami niyo pong pwedeng uh, panoorin, pwedeng suportahan. So hopefully, uh, let's a lot time, give time, konting panahon na lang po election na. So, mm -hmm. gawan natin ng ano, gawan natin ng, gawa tayo ng oras para po makapanood at makasali. Uh, we're also very proud to announce that the Climate Reality Project Philippines will also co-present uh, with the UP Green League's ambassadorship program. So the UPGL ambassadorship ambassadors program is UP Green League Inc.'s 
response to the calls for human and concrete implementation of climate change mitigation strategies. With the Philippines remaining to be one of the most disaster vulnerable countries in the world, most especially during this pandemic, no? ito po ay isang, it is imperative that our advocacy towards people and planet-centered adaptation, climate change, protection of environmental defenders, and empowerment of the Filipino must be ingrained into the consciousness of the public in pursuit of united stand towards a more socially responsible government and resilient environment. Kaya po mag-sign up na tayo using this link sa screen po ito para po maging isang UPGL environmental ambassador. Ayan. Naku, exciting benefits po pala awaits our future ambassadors. Kaya sali na po kayo. Oh. Yes, Sally na. Ayan. So, this time, we are calling climate ab- advocates, writers, and poets to join When Is Now, a global creative collaboration for urgent climate action. Organized by the Agam Agenda, Climate Vulnerable Forum, and Institute for Climate and Sustainable Cities, when is now is an open evolving call for creative expression and collaboration to demand for urgent climate action so all you need is a seed of an idea a string of words and your willingness to share your experience as well as acknowledge and respond to others experiences of the climate crisis to learn more about this initiative and how you can submit poems and seeds of creative climate action in many different forms, visit whenisnow.org. Ayan. Altogether, Agam Agenda will be interweaving lines of poetry into a web that stretches across the planet asking when and demanding now. Correct. No? So we're calling all, of course, our creatives. Naku, baka yung mga writers din natin, ang mga filmmakers, bago gusto yes. rin mag-join dyan. So sobrang exciting yan. Sobrang ganda. Of course, we would also like to invite everyone to order your copy of Harvest Moon. Naku, wala pa po ba kayong copy? Kami meron napakaganda po. Uh, Harvest Moon is, of course, uh, an anthology of loves and lives of stories that thrive at the borders and edge of the climate crisis. The book features over 50 award-winning and emerging writers, photographers, and artists across Africa, Asia, the Pacific, and Latin America. In keeping with the vision of a beautiful yet accessible book for diverse readers, the Agab Agenda and the Institute for Climate and Sustainable Cities are offering this limited Philippine edition at a significantly marked down price. Kaya order na po. Uh, order yours now at the link flash on our screen. Nako, kumuha na po kayo napakaganda pong libro nito. Ethel, I think at this point, we'd also like to announce. Ayan, get your copies. It's available now. Ito, may copy na rin po ako. No? Sana, supportahan natin. Napakagandang libro po. So you can grab your copies. Uh, flash on the screen po. Kasi nyo sila pwedeng bas- uh, panoor. Ah, uh, bilihin. Di ba? You, where you can purchase. So thank you to Agam Agenda. Alright. So Ethel, at this point, we'd also like to announce those who won? Siyempre, announcement of winners. Exciting yes. to. Announcement of winners na po tayo sa ating klimatotohanan question from last episode. Sana nandito sila. No? Congratulations! Walang iba sa ating winners to fame. Gabisay, Aileen Renoblas Banog-Banog, Leia Joyce Gatus, Gat, Gahutos. Ayan. Congratulations to you guys, fame, Aileen, and Leia the Climate Reality Project Philippines will coordinate with you for your prize. All right. So dahil in-announce na, di ba? So dahil in-announce na rin po natin ang winners from last week, ito na po ang question for this episode. Sa mga nag-aabang po at gusto manalo, ito po ang ating question for the day. What is your favorite environmental documentary and what lessons and realizations did you learn after watching it? Ako napakarami. Sobrang dami. Sobrang dami kong masasabi dyan kasi sobrang fan ako ng documentary. Sagutin lamang po ang itong ang mga katanungan ito sa ating comment section base po sa inyong mga kasagutan. Pipili po kami ng winners na makakatanggap ng special prizes. I-announce naman po ang winners sa susunod na episode. Kaya po, again, basahin natin ang ating question for the day. Ipopost din naman po natin sa ating comment section and we look forward to reading your answer. So, again, mga kapatid, you can send as many entries as you can. O, di ba? Unlimited entries pala to, di ba? Kaya sali lang po ng sali. Yes, ayan. So, 
ipadala na ang inyong mga sagot. Okay, baka kayo na ang susunod na mananalo at sa ating Klima Totohanan episode for today. Thank you, Miss Amy. And of course, continuing now with our discussion tonight, let us call Charlene Favis and Baron Paolo Aquino, the writers and directors of the documentary film Trash Talk. Together, let us watch this video. Nagkalat na basura sa iba't ibang bahagi ng puok pasyalan sa Baguio City. Inaasahang aabot sa 500 hanggang 600 tons ng basura ang makokolekta kada araw dito sa Baguio City. We're spending 130 million a year just to attend to this waste. Pag wala yung pupuntaan ng mga basura, magkakaproblema at magkakaproblema. Pag nag-increase ang population, mag-increase ang generation. City of Baguio is a, a consumer area. It's not a production area. This garbage entails so many facets of the dynamics of society. It involves health, wellness, even politics. Uh, hindi naman yung bayad talaga eh, ang tina-target nun eh. Yung education, and yung mamulat ka talaga. Kung wala yung mga volunteer natin, anong mangyayari sa bagyo? Kung tinitignan nila yung trabaho namin, kala nila madali lang pero mahirap. Isang araw lang na hindi makulit ang basura at ang bakna. Ang daming sakripisyo ang basurero. Hindi <laughs> nila maintindihan kasi yung trabaho namin. Wow, ayan. So, gustong-gusto ko kung gano'ng ka-catchy yung title. Ayan, short but very catchy. Trash talk. Ayan. So, dito sa sa teaser na nakita natin, usaping basura, gusto ko yung sinabi kaagad yung issue na ilang milyon yung nai-spend para lang dito, para lang i-manage yung waste natin. Ayan, so very urgent, ano? But not only that, tinignan din yung mismong individual lives ng ating mga basurero. Um, Naka-impact sa akin yung yung interview, kumbaga, yung conversation with with them na kung paano sila tignan ng masa, kung paano sila tignan ng society. And gusto ko sanang itanong, Charlene and Baron, ano, ano yung masasabi nyo pa about this film? What is it all about? Bukod sa nakita namin sa teaser. Ayan. Hey, hello po, Alit. And, uh, yeah. So, ang Crash Talk po, short documentary siya tungkol sa basura nga ng bagyo. Uh, so, these are the stories and experiences from waste management, including mm -hmm. na yung challenges, yung initiatives, and yung current process. Uh, me and my co-director po, si, si Paolo, uh, we're, we've, we're locals po here, and we've lived here like all of our lives. So, ever since we were kids, uh, garbage has always been an issue for the city. Like, we see mm -hmm. it in the news as kids. Tapos nung nag kami, we study about it. As, yun, so, laging iniisip, saan natin itatapon yung basura ng Baguio? Mm -hmm. Parang ganun po. And um, so, when we were given this chance to produce like an engaging documentary uh, na tungkol sa environmental awareness, ito talaga po yung pinili namin yung sa basura po. And so, yung trash talk po, it takes... um. Basically, it takes waste as its key subject to reveal yung risks ng pollution by waste. So, mm -hmm. what's its effect sa environment, sa people, yun po. Kasi nga, as our city keeps on like developing and growing, pati yung waste natin nag-develop at nag-grow. So, yeah, that's, that's what it's about. 
Yes. Thank you, Charlene. Um, just to add on, no, dun sa sinabi ni Charlene, very much connected yung mga ginagawa natin sa land, sa sea. Yung mga basurahan dito sa land, it will affect din yung mga marine habitats, yung mga marine organisms natin sa sea, lalo na sa Baguio. Uh, we are very near sa La Union, okay, sa mga beaches. Ayan. So, I would just like to ask you, Charlene, ano, ano yung nag-motivate sa inyong dalawa to arrive at this concept? With all the, yung mga pwede nating pag-usapan, bakit, bakit about sa trash? Bakit about sa basura? At during your filmmaking process, ano yung mga lessons na natutunan ninyo in making this film? Well, tama nga po na, yeah, like the waste po kapag hindi siya segregated properly, properly it'll trickle down, it can kill mm-hmm. like soil, but also yung water talagang irreparable yun. So, because of that nga po na it's so, what do you call that, it's concerning at the same time, bago, before it's too late, yun nga, gusto namin mapag-usapan na siya. Mm-hmm. And hopefully it does, it helps. And yung... Sa lessons, sobrang daming lessons, pero like this this film festival po, siguro for a documentary, short po kasi yung production process, uh, yeah, production period namin, like a month lang. Pero no. it's like that, no, mga, yung mga ganun po na challenges, like really sharpens our skills para we become better filmmakers. So that we, kasi hindi po nagsastop dito, I'm pretty sure all of us po, kami, uh, me and my fellow filmmakers, we wanna keep producing, we wanna keep sharing. Mm-hmm talk about um yun nga show po not just environmental issues social issues lahat po yun so yun this really helps po and siguro yung biggest like lesson po talaga for me that I learned is yung nung nakinig po kami sa plights ng mga basurero po kasi mm-hmm. para makita mo doon na napaka crucial na we gain like a deeper understanding and listen to them kasi nga regardless of who we are um waste affects each and every one of us talaga mm-hmm. and yeah it's <laughs> Thank you, Charlene. I think, I think um, very powerful yan yadin ng bosses yung ating mga basurero. And hindi lang sila basurero, di ba? They need then our respect bilang tao, bilang parte, malagang parte ng society natin. And congratulations for your film for being able to produce it even to all our uh, guest speakers now very short yung bigay pala na production time pero natapos niyo nang maayos ang mga films niyo and congratulations so um please uh, invite our viewers tonight to watch your show yes like like um as they said no po please just follow po yung Montañosa page kasi all the details are there all the there's like really a lot of film over more than 26 that's yung from other international and local then that's a lot so it is like a great opportunity wow. for everyone to learn that's yun our our theme is um mindset change for climate change so yeah i hope you guys get to check it out thank you thank you then thank you so much already and so i'm excited ako dyan sa I resonated. Actually, I remember when I was younger. No field trip pa kami before sa Irisan Dam site. It was part of, you know, yung and yung learning of the, the the situation now. I know it's it's turned into a, an eco farm or an eco an eco park na, de ba? And that's a that's a good shift, no? Considering na dati siyang um dam site, de ba? And the problem really with trash, among other things, talagang problema sa Baguio at sa iba't ibang lugar. Talagang maganda yung insights. I actually read about the synopsis. It's not just focusing on um, the garbage collectors, hindi lang yung flight nila. You also talked about aspects of, you know, a, a person manifesting zero waste lifestyle and also, mm-hmm. of course, yung mga city officials natin managing that aspect. So, ang ganda, ang very, ang, ang rich lang na magiging discussions. I'm very excited to learn more about that uh, ang problema po ng basira, basura ay hindi lang problema ng kalat. That's not it. Hindi na po, hindi na, hindi na yan usapin about kalat na lang yan eh. It's, it's a climate change issue already. It's a climate climate related issue. Uh, lalo ngayon, di ba? Lalo na nag impact na sa biodiversity, sa sa health, di ba? Sa iba't ibang aspeto. So maraming salamat, Charlene, for shedding a light. Uh, and nagustuhan kayo yung sinabi mo na hindi kayo titigid. Di ba? Tuloy-tuloy pa rin kayo. Sana nga tuloy-tuloy, tuloy-tuloy pa rin kasi 
kailangan natin malaman yung mga realities na ganito, di ba? And sometimes we're blinded, eh, di ba? Sabi ko nga before, medyo, medyo passionate ito kasi plastic, so, hindi, obviously. Kasi uh, this is an issue that affects us all, but others don't see it as a problem, di ba? Hindi nila nakikita na problema ito, pero problema po ito, di ba? Problema po talaga ito. So maraming salamat, Charlene, for that. And obviously, uh, I know a lot of people were inspired Uh, sana po marami, no? Sana po manood kayo, panoorin natin, supportan natin si Shirley and of course si Paolo. So maraming salamat. And of course, uh, one more important thing is of course providing opportunities, ex- alternatives, no? practices that we can all do. Sabi nga natin kanina, just, di ba? Just and green recovery. Hindi lang po sa isang segment ng society yan. Hindi dapat ganun lang, di ba? Tingnan po natin siya sa kabuuan, di ba? Hindi lang po dapat apektado ang isang komunidad doon. Dapat lahat po medyo just at green yung recovery natin. And thank you so much for having that perspective from the different sectors para mas maintindihan natin yan. So salamat sa'yo, Charlene. We'll talk about, we'll talk, we'll talk, we'll talk to you later on doon sa ating open forum. Thank you. Di ba, Ethel? Thank you. Yes. Yes. Uh, gusto ko yun. Um, na, nararamdaman ko, kahit magkalayo po kami ni Miss Amy ngayon, nararamdaman ko yung passion niya. Kasi totoo nga, it's also a lifestyle issue, yung waste na naproproduce din natin ngayon. And let's join the zero waste movement, di ba? Ayan. So, hindi naman tayo perfectly zero, pero at least we're starting. We try to take the... Uh, certain steps towards zero waste. Okay, so before I introduce our next speaker, I just want to remind everyone again, our viewers, that you can comment your questions already, okay? Jan sa ating comment section and our team will pick it up and we will relay it to our guest speakers in the open forum later. Ayan. So finally, We are now down to our last guest, okay, for tonight. So, up next is Shemen Padua, who wrote and directed The Carbon Eater. Sabay-sabay po natin panoorin ang teaser na ito. Iti panagalamit si Wids kat nasorsoro mi lang ka dagiti naganak mi ti lulung mi kan dagiti muno na pa nga tao dito ayan mi nga di mi mamamon no ka mamom mi lang ang mangkanda awan iti mi may nga organization start no isuro da no anya ti mabalin ka damadi no dikit di bukod mi nga naamuan ka dagiti ininaw nang da kami nga dagiti kat mayat kan Mas lagi na palabas nga pa ng ganda ti si Wits kay Dagadot na 50 garab. Ito dati bagyo na. May da nag-deliver, baka ang muda bumagbagyo. Dapat nag-ajay ko na, nag-ajay. Hanyo nga i-deliver no, nagbagbagyo.
Ay, so ganda, di ba? Thank you so much for that and for the for very nice teaser. Uh, very excited to talk to you about about this. Of course, si Shemen, no? Ganda nung, maganda nung cinematography, no? Magandang maganda. And very excited to learn more about this. No? It's actually a snippet of how, di ba? An idea of what our seaweed farmers and of course our gatherers are, no? Day-to-day, day-to-day lives and struggles nila. Uh, maganda, malaman pa more about this. Bakit kaya carbon eater ito? No? Kaya very excited kami to learn about this. Can you tell us, Shemen, ako, excited ako to learn more about this. What is carbon eater all about? And what is your motivation basically to create this film? Okay. Hi. Um, the carbon eater, katulad nga po nang sinabi nyo kanina, it's about the flight, um, daily lives of uh, simple seaweed farmer and gatherer yet they are doing it extraordinarily. Yun po yung gusto namin ipakita. To give more detail, um, our seaweed farmer, the older guy, which is um, ang, um, Sir Francisco uh, Sibayan, um, he was supported by BFAR and other organizations in seaweed farming. While the younger one, which is also an orphan, uh, the seaweed gatherer has no... Um, support from any organizations at all. Yun po yung difference nila besides from being a seaweed farmer and a uh, seaweed gatherer. Napaka, ano po, uh, medyo emotional ako sa <laughs> documentary na ito. It's really um, an eye-opener for me as a director uh, during the experience. Well, uh, what motivated me to create this film um, I was supposed to be an agriculturist, although hindi ko siya na i-apply because I went, um, I went abroad, doon ako nagtrabaho. But then, um, when I came back in the Philippines, um, I was uh, also interested in urban gardening because we are in the city. It's very important that we promote urban gardening in our city um, for uh, food um, consumption. Diba? Kuminsan kasi, mas very healthier talaga yung galing sa backyard natin or sana natin instead of buying somewhere else. Um, what motivated me when Montanio sa Film Festival um, pronounced that their title is going to be Mindset Change for Climate Change, I said, wow, ang ganda naman ng ano nila ngayon, ng gusto nila, ng platform na binibigay nila sa atin ngayon. And then um, a fellow urban gardener told me that, why don't you check for seaweeds? I have no idea about seaweeds before, actually. Sabi niya, why don't you check on seaweeds? Something like that. And then, why? Something like that. Tapos ako na po yung nag-research, ako na po yung nag, uh, uh, nag-look through. And then I saw through the internet that there's not much promotion of seaweeds in northern Luzon. <laughs> Hindi po siya totally kilala. And um, however, sa southern Luzon, I mean, southern part of our country, like uh, Mindanao area, nag export po sila. So, ang, sa Manipalang, sa northern Luzon, it's very natural. It's already there. We just have to be informed how to use it, especially in Ilocos Sur, Ilocos Norte. So, I actually, when we went to La Union, wala po kaming kilala na makakontak na seaweed farmer. So we went there, look for before, look for this person, look for this person. They just point, point, point hanggang makarating po kami sa seaweed farmer natin. And we really, uh, we were really hooked with uh, Sir Sibayan. He has a very good humor and character and um, care for his community. So, pumalik po kami nung ilang beses, siguro mga tatlo, apat, just to be able to get more information and uh, document yung life niya. Um, ano pa ba? That's, that's why I, I, I just love uh, Uncle Sibayan, Sir Sibayan, because of the character that he showed to us. And uh, it's like, it's, uh, it pushed me to be um, more involved in this uh, promotion for seniors. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, mm-hmm. It started with an idea, diba? Sabi mo kanina, you got interested with the topic. Kasi totoo, no? Kahit ako, when, when we had that initial meeting with Montanyosa Group, 
sila isa nalaman ko na yun yung topic sabi ko that's very interesting and that's the diba, that's something that's sustainable it's something that sana a lot of our film festival in the Philippines would focus attention on so talagang natuwa ako doon and having that idea and you know creating something this beautiful from that de ba hindi natin alam na ang seaweed pala is powerful in terms of carbon sequestration de ba so talagang ang ganda nung ano ang ganda ng natural flow ng story ang ganda ng naging ano naging direction ng story so maraming salamat were there any lessons or prizes you've learned along the way along filming alam ko medyo emotional ka kanina no may mga lessons ka ba na gusto i maybe excite or mga ano surprises na hindi mo inexpect super po napaka it's a very humbling experience Because usually directors with with all the gears and the confidence and the the cameras and the knowledge feeling mo magaling ka kung minsan, but when you go there, and ang sinabi lang po namin sa kanila is that you just show us what you do every day because we just want to see what can we get. But when they start talking, it's like ah okay I see. Ganon pala parang wala pala kami alam. <laughs> You know, so it's a very uh, the the wisdom that they have, the passion, the resilience, the patience on what they do. Parang feeling feeling ko parang wala ako sa kalingkingan ng ginagawa nila. They are our silent heroes, yet they do not know. Yun po yung parang ano. So we really hope that um yung yung kasi the, especially for the seaweed farmers, no. Yes, they are having um. supports from our government agencies but the sustainability is not there yeah um regarding naman kay um uh, uh yung nickname kasi nilang naalala ko the one in uh, Ilocos Norte his name is Jose Carlo but we call him Moreno that's his nickname um is very if you're going to watch the movie mapapawaw na lang po kayo sa ma sa storyline niya. Kasi at a very young age, how how will you be able to uh, realize that your parents need help? Ganun po. And so, <laughs> panoorin niyo po. Maganda siya. Sobrang excited na akong panoorin yan. I hope you guys are also excited to watch that. Um, may puso eh. Nakita natin. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's there's heart. Always naman yun yung center, di ba? Yun yung center. Especially if you're featuring, you have Uh, you have subjects, diba? you have specific subjects. Exc- excited to learn more about that. I guess, yung nabanggit mo kanina, Shem, is about, you know, <coughs> it's also a call to action, especially kasi kung sinasabi natin na hindi pinibigyan ng priority, ba? Diba? itong prosesong ito, and that technically can support us in terms of mitigating climate change. Sana po, no? more of opening the eyes of our legislators. That's very interesting, diba? So, yeah. please, you know, please, you know, please join us to encourage to to ano to encourage uh, our audience now to support you support, of course yung mga subject mo baka gusto rin mag-shout out mag-provide ng ano counting shout out to them ah oh, yes um I, i'm sure they will <laughs> i'm sure hindi sila no no because they're uh, the the access to internet and you know it's it's lesser in their community but um i i really look up to them and i really want them to uh know how popular they are now you know and um yeah everyone i would like to invite lahat po nang nanonood uh, montaña sa film festival is currently happening all around baguio the manor of john um camp john hay um bcc grand sierra pines Uh, Hotel Silvina. I'm not sure if uh, there's new hotels in line. They are showing our films for free. So you just go to their venue, kung ano man po yung ano, and then sit down and watch. Um, Athletic Bowl, uh, Baguio Convention, where we're also screening our films and other films. So panoorin niyo po. Panoorin niyo po. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Excited ako para dyan, Shem. And I know ikaw, Ethel, malamang, no? excited ka. Hindi lang sa yes, carbon super. eater. Tingin ko lahat papanoorin ni Ethel. Eh. Ako din. Obviously, I'm gonna support you guys online naman. Ayan. Yes, Miss Amy. Tama po kayo dyan. And being someone na sa amin po kasi sa Apari, sa, dahil taga-Apari po yung nanay ko, um, Kumakain po talaga kami ng seaweed, mga ar-arusip, yeah, yeah. ganyan. You Tapos takal-takal po I was, yan. I was thinking of the word, ar-arusip, tama-tama. Yeah. Opo, opo, ayan. So talagang takal-takal sa palengke, ganyan. So isa nga dapat sa mga itatanong ko kay Miss Sheven ay kung mahilig ba siya sa seaweeds. Kaya 
<laughs> Kaya niya to naging uh, main focus. Ayan, pero na na rinig nga po natin ang kanyang kwento at talagang driven siya by the stories of what she learned throughout that filmmaking process at very privileged nga tayo na makikita natin to yung nakita ni Michelle may narinig niya maririnig at makikita din natin ayun so thank you very much for that and very inspiring lahat ng mga works ng mga filmmakers be it our guest speakers ngayon or yung mga hindi din na naka hindi naka join sa ating segment na to very inspiring yung kanilang work i'm sure and Naalala ko lang yung narinig ko na sinabi ng isang marine biologist natin sa Pilipinas, si Mr. Deo Onda, Ayan, si Dr. Deo Onda. At sabi niya, nakakabit ang bituka ng mga Pilipino sa dagat. And this work, I think, this work specially um, shows us that yung daily lives ng ating farmers, ng seaweed farmers. At nakita natin yan, and not It's not just about harvesting, it's not just about selling. Meron ding mga kaakibat na problema ito, of course, with every livelihood. And yung teaser pa lang, eye-opener na siya. Tama po ba, Miss Amy? Yes, so oh, definitely. Yan naman yung ano eh. Yan naman yung gustong i-portray really of all the films, the realities. Uh, of all, nakita naman natin sa lahat ng documentaries, no? Nakita natin that there's that natural tendency to open up our eyes in terms of the realities. Iba't ibang sector, yun yung nagustuhan ko. Iba't ibang sector, iba't ibang topics. And, you know, as always, sabi nga kanina, Riram, not all people, sabi ko nga, almost of, most of us, or a lot of us are visual learners. They might not understand the theories, the scientists, or the your, yung technicalities of, what, of it all. But when you show them a film or a picture, mas madali nilang nag-grasp yun, di ba? Kaya, sobra akong excited. I believe we need more of this, di ba? Alam ko, uh, aside from the documentaries that we presented today, meron pang iba, so sana po supportahan din natin yan. We need more of this, especially po sa panahon ngayon. Kasi, you know, uh, I actually started, I got interested with Climate Reality Project because of inconvenient truth. Yun naman yung reality, yes. di ba? So imagine that impact of a documentary to open up the eyes of a person, such as us, di ba? Kaya ang ganda, ang laki ng possibility of creating action and change through these documentaries. Kaya nga po, in a time where everybody shall have an open mind to understand the effects of human practices to the environment. Kaya nga po, these documentary films have definitely the power to inspire and enable actions among the audience. Kagaya ko nga, di ba? At kagaya mo rin, Ethel. Yes, tama. So nagsimula lang po kaming mga fangirls ni ni Inconvenient Truth, okay? And I'm sure maraming ma our hope and the hope of our guest speakers now, maraming ang ma spark into action, ma ignite ayan ng mga climate activists na tulad namin, okay? So to continue with our more fruitful discussions, of course, with our guests Let us now proceed with the open forum. Pero, bago ang lahat, syempre, magsha-shoutout muna tayo. Ayan. So, shout out kay Bianca Nasayaw from Legaspi City, Albay. Hi po. Kay Miss Mary Villarin ng Bulagan. Okay. Uh, Jessica Puno from Osaka, Japan. Wow! Hanggang sa Japan, nakakarating tayo. Ayan, from Krisa Alcovendas. Hi po, from Legaspi City. Anne Raylin Meduelan from Albay, Gino, Ginobatan, Albay. Okay, and Ewan Paris de la Torre also from Albay. Jem Marion, Batangas City. Hello po sa inyo dyan. At um, dinner time na, I'm sure. Uh, kumakain po sila habang nakikinig sa atin. Hello, hello. Uh, si Loelia Lede- Leathers. Okay, Leathers. Valenzuela City. Hello. Justin Rabida, Sibuyan Island, Romblon. Wow. Chloe Janela Bolaño Raya. Rojas City. Hello po sa inyo dyan. Uh, Rexan Mark Fortes from Valenzuela City as well. Hello po, Mr. Uh, Mark Fortes. Alma Centillar from Lawak, Pangasinan. Malapit na malapit dito. Colleen May Valeras from Kamsur. Wow! Michael Angelo Benigno 
City of Ilagan, Isabela, ayan, mga karehiyon dos, okay? So, Daphne Johan Icarla Pina from Davao de Oro. Relani Lasquite, hi po, from Negros Occidental. Jade Lawrence Barlas, Tresor Martirez City, Cavite, hello po. And to Miss Jessica Puno, again from Osaka, Japan, hello po. Salamat po kasi nandito pa rin kayo, nakikinig hanggang sa oras na ito. Yes, alam ko, excited pa at marami pa yan. Maraming marami pa yata ang sumubong mabati. So maraming maraming salamat po sa nanonood. Now let's move on to the next segment of our show. Yan, ito na po ang opportunity for our open forum. So we request all of our speakers, if you can turn on your video, shikahan po tayo. No? At basahin natin yung mga tanong mula sa ating mga audience. Alam ko, excited silang malaman kung ano ba yung... At makasikahan yung ating mga guest speakers. Ako rin, medyo excited ako kung kausapin pa sila lalo. No? Huwag po kayo mag-alala, hindi naman ito nakakatakot na tanong. Simplehan lang. So we will ask some questions. Paunahan na lang po kung sino susagot. No? Hindi, hindi naman. Well, ano, I will give, we'll give courtesy to everybody who wants to answer. Of course. Ayan. Our first question is, of course, Sabi po rito sa tanong, at maraming salamat po sa nagtanong sa ating Facebook comments. Mm -hmm. Are there enough platforms and opportunities given to local documentary filmmakers in the country, especially those who are focused on climate and environment? Ano po bang klaseng support pa ang kailangan ng mga documentary filmmakers mula sa gobyerno o mula po sa mga private sectors? Who wants to answer this? Tama, ano? Sabi, enough po ba yung platforms na ibigay para po sa inyo, no? similar to inyo sa mga local uh, documentary filmmakers and what specific support po ba ang kailangan maybe in the government or maybe in the private sector para po uh, masuportahan kayo si Geraldine parang gusto sumagot sige go ahead Geraldine um, <laughs> I think ano po um, sa wait mamaya na lang pasa sarot kasi <laughs> it's okay filmmaking, like first time ko po kasi ito. So, I suggest na Ate Shem na lang po. <laughs> Pinasa niya kayo, Shem. Pinasa niya kayo, Shem. Go ahead, Shem. Yes, actually, uh, most of the documentaries are first time filmmakers. Um, um, I'm not new because I had uh, two films last year, but it's my first time to be the director. See, I think um, Char are doing few projects, but maybe this is their new film in the festival also. I think same with Ram. Pero si Ram, he has already experienced then. Um, I think the, 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 the supports that we need are, of course, um, grants. You know, yun yung pinakakailangan namin, eh, monetary, to move, to be able to move and um, access into uh, different agencies siguro, uh, lalo na if a certain project is um, in a certain community, because we also have one, um, one finalist na yung subject niya is um, in Marawi, you know. Uh, kaya nga sabi ko, oh my gosh, how, I, I'm not sure how it, she's going to do it. Kasi mahirap yung access into community siguro or if you do you need to get um, approval from the LGU. Yeah, even me, when I went to um, a Balawan and just to do an interview, just to film uh, a simple seaweed farmer and ask for some people in before to be interviewed, they asked me na nag-email ka na ba sa LGU or na gano'n. But uh, unfortunately, madali lang naman. Uh, and uh, kuminsan lang kasi um, part part naman po yun ng responsibility namin sa research to check kung ano yung mga kailangan namin gawin and uh, yun nga napakahirap lang ngayong pandemic kasi syempre the movement is not and we're just fortunate that na diskartehan namin but um, most importantly i think is the monetary support <laughs> thank you so much for that shem how about you, Ram? No? Total, ikaw rin kasi you've been also exposed to that. You know, you already have experience in terms of making documentary films. What do you think were, you know, uh, do you think na in terms of, ano, no, in terms of opportunities, di ba? Uh, do you think it's enough, especially yung opportunities provided for local documentaries? And of course, what support 
uh, do you think is needed, especially for you in your field? Okay. Uh, parang yung tanong is the question of enough. So parang, so siguro sasagutin ko na lang siya na no, no personal basis or personal ko po na opinion kasi nga, mahirap daw gumawa ng documentary such as this because somehow, um, kung aatake ka talaga ng posible, aatake ka ng gobyerno, aatake ka ng mga prinsipyo, aatake ka ng batas, aatake ka ng ano, mga, ano nang ginagawa ng our climate action. So, however kailangan eh. So, para sa akin, enough ba yung mga platforms na binibigay? Siguro hindi ganun dahil um, good good thing na ang MFFU is yung topic nila is climate. Yeah, mindset change for climate change and very relevant ngayon na mga panahon. Um, we are so thankful and grateful to have this. This is also my first time actually to do uh, Uh, documentary about climate action and about climate change. Before, I was just doing other things, pero I other documentary, pero ito yung first topic ko about climate action. So, napakaganda na merong mga ganito, pero kung tatanungin ako ang opinion ko ay hindi ganun. Kasi malawak. Kahit sa doc, ganito yung nalang pagkakasagot ko. Kahit nga ang documentary mismo, hindi ganun ka ngayon na siguro na nag-pandemic, mas maraming nanonood sa Netflix ng documentary. Di ba? Uh, <laughs> tapos, ngayon na, mas nanonood na ang tao ng documentary dahil nasa Netflix na available na mas gusto nila na mas realidad ng mga kwento. So, pumapasok ang mga ganitong ding mga topic, ang mga usapin. So, it's, it's good. Papasok na tayo. However, um, hindi pa ganun ka enough. And I hope mas malalawakan pa, mas marami pa ang mga agencies at ano-ano pa mga organizations that will really uh, give time to tackle climate change and climate actions. Thank you so much for that, Ram. Uh, tama, no? sinabi mo nga rin yan kanina. It, it triggers, sometimes yung topics kasi can be controversial. Kaya alam naman natin, di ba, usong-uso ngayon kasi ang ang red tagging. Yes. So parang minsan, you, you tend to be very resistant if you want to focus on these types of topics kasi medyo nagiging controversial siya. But again, you want to tell the truth, di ba? Nagsasabi ka lang naman ng realities, nagsasabi ka ng totoo. Is there anything you want to add, Geraldine, uh, of Sherlyn, before we proceed to the next question? Uh, siguro po, yun nga na uh, sobrang important ng support. Like, even if you're just watching or you're just talking, kasi it creates interest. Kasi pag may interest tayo, hindi ko, that it's really opening more doors for all of us. Like, um maybe researchers, like, can collaborate and then, like, we can, you know, like, make it uh, uh, m- mas entertaining or mas pakita. Like, yun po, parang maybe also uh, like, agencies or government po mas ma-communicate namin yung mga kailangan din sabihin. So, yun po. Basta po, in, lumaki po sana yung interest and support. Talagang makatulong din for all of us. Yun po. Thank you so much for that. That's true. Diba? Kasi the more people that will support, diba? nakikita nila yung beauty, yung, yung, yung beauty, yung purpose, yung objective why we're doing documentary films, the more na mas magsusupport. Diba? And napaka, napaka, ano, we're very happy, we're very honored Now, we had this partnership with Montañosa and also had this chance to talk to you guys to at least open up your your audience pa, di ba? Kasi kailangan talaga natin ng, ng support uh, across all all the different sectors. So thank you so much to all of you for the answers. Ethel, ikaw na yung next question natin. Ayan. Okay, salamat Miss Amy and thank you sa fruitful na discussion for that first question. So, dito po sa paggawa ng mga documentary films on environment and climate, Meron din po ba tayong struggles sa ating pagbalanse ng facts and science and of course yung creative execution? Ayan. Kung sino man po ang gustong sumagot, you may. Ayan, free Hello, will. Yeah. Okay. Napapaano so, ako kasi ako yung pinaka-ate tapos lahat sila titingin sa'yo. No? <laughs> Sige, um. <laughs> Um, yes, definitely. There, there is a struggle. Like um, my subject, the seaweed farmer, um, he was being supported by the government and other agencies. Yet, it's not enough. It's not sustainable. So, um, pero hindi naman siguro fair na yung part lang niya yung ipapakita ko. 
So I need to show a little bit from the other side. Although in um, documentary style, um, um, in create, you know, when, when you're talking about creativity, hindi rin maganda that uh, you're going to give all the information throughout. Uh, you, you, you leave a space for the uh, viewers to maybe admire your subjects, the venue, or, or kung ano pa yung gusto mong um, ipakita doon. Kasi mahirap din for viewers to absorb everything at the same time. So, yun yung isa sa mga struggle if um, I'm going to put this, I'm going to put that. Um, yun nga, sabi ko in, in my part then, uh, when uh, some people are asking what's the hardest part of your documentary is the editing. Because there's just so much information, so many things you want to say, yet you have limited time and you have to really be careful what you're going to show. Yun po. Uh, uh, sagot na kayo. <laughs> Thank you, ate. Ayan, ate ng group. Um, ang galing, ano, oo nga, for, for our filmmakers, yung kung paano nila pagsunod-sunurin yung mga images, kung paano nila dadagdagan ng sound ngayon ito, ng, ng kung, kung meron bang music or yung mismong natural sounds ba ang ilalagay nila. So, very interesting po kung ano po yung journey nyo in Coming to this field, bilang nasa natural sciences tayo nung una, okay? So, tama nga din si Miss Shem na, oo, gusto mong ilagay lahat ng mga natutunan mo, ng mga um, gusto mong information na makuha ng audience, pero tama din na kailangan nandun yung excitement or at least anticipation, suspense, kumbaga, sa ating audience. Ayun. So, would anyone want to add kung ano pa? Ayan, yung kung paano, paano tayo nag struggle in balancing yung facts, science, as well as creative execution sa paggawa ng films. Okay. Ayan. Kakahiyaan so, na sila. Oo, mukhang nag-iisip din sila. Iniisip din nila ang kanilang mga struggles. Plus okay, one so, kay Shem. Parang plus one to Shem na lang sila. Plus yeah. Oh, curious <laughs> lang ako, Miss Shem. Uh, anong, mula po ba nung bata kayo ay uh, very interested na ba kayo? Into, ano, Windows Movie Maker na po ba kayo? Or, or nagkaroon po kayo ng formal training sa pag-edit, ayan, pag-film, pagkuha ng mga litrato? No so, mga videos. Um, I I think when kasi medyo older generation na siguro 1980s, 87, something like that. I think the creativity is within. Um, siguro yung brain ko nagfo function sa gitna. But then I was trained. I I grew up with my own teacher. I was trained in math, science. You're competing in math, science, math, science. And um, yun yung training ko. So, napolish ako sa science. I went to uh, UPLB in science also. So, um, I don't know. But but when every time that we go for we go to uh, vacation with my parents in Hong Kong, camera talaga ang hawak ko. <laughs> photography. So, I, in my younger years, I already know that I want to be a photographer. Pero yung training ko nga iba. So when when uh, I work in Singapore, I was um, I I kind of drained the whole in the corporate world. World, I came home and I pursued photography. Um, I I never imagined that I'm going to films. It's just that I think uh, some of my friends saw uh, my skills in photography and they asked me to be their uh, cinematographer. And then during the course of being a cinematographer, they're already pushing me na, sige na, you do the thing, you do the thing. And it's like, I don't think it's not enough yet. Parang gano'n. Dahil ko pong kakainig bigas. Yan. But um, this year, I was really like, um, sige na nga, <laughs> let's try. So, yun. Wow. Thank you. So, sa lahat po dyan ng ating viewers, it's not too late. Okay? Kung, kung mapaanong field ka man ngayon, kung gusto mong Ipursu katulad ni Miss Shem ang inyong um, interest, ang inyong creative interest, go for it. Ayan. So, thank you po for that. Ayan. Would anyone want to add pa po 
sa kanilang um, creative process kung paano nila binabalanse ang facts, okay, ang creative execution. Dahil kung wala na, we can move on to our next um, yes. question. I think, ano eh, very interesting yung sinabi ni Shem, no? She has experience, but I know most of her filmmakers now, si, si Geraldine, si Charlene, of course, si Ram, they just started 2000. Mm-hmm. Ito lang, very recent, no? And thank you so much for taking that step. Kasi medyo, di ba, medyo may level of stepping out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. na yan, eh, di ba? And trying to explore something that's not, you know, something that you're not familiar with. And this question is really for you guys. Kasi, uh, there's a comment here and they say, congratulations daw, syempre, to all of our, our resource speakers. Uh, napakaganda. I think, siguro napanood niya na or excited talaga siya ta panoorin to. And uh, you guys mentioned that most of the topics that you shared is based on your own personal experiences, right? Sinabi niyo yan kanina. And then, siguro for new filmmakers, may interesting question. May, may question for you really is, you're stepping into something that's not uh, familiar, di ba? Something na hindi niyo masyadong kabisado. Uh, probably these are issues that you are not commonly used to. Hindi kayo masyadong uh, sanay, hindi kayo immersed. Now, how was it? How was that process for you? How did you immerse yourself? How did you reach out to the communities? Uh, paano po kayo nagbigay ng kulay dito sa, sa mga pelikula ninyo? Or, sige. Go ahead, Ram. Okay, so magdadagdag lang din ako kanina. So, sabi po nga ni Ate Shem, <laughs> ina Ate, <laughs> uh, Doing documentary is really uh, looking for a lot of footages. So, ba? Tapos, tatahiin mo yan eh, afterwards. So, mahirap tahiin kasi you should follow a narrative arc. So, when you see, when you have this narrative arc, dapat merong peak yan. And then, of course, may resolution. Paano yung gagawin? Hihahanapin mo yan sa one hour mong interview with it. Napakahirap sa mo dapat putulin. Uh, hindi mo dapat putulin in a way na para maggawa lamang ng kwento at para magustuhan lamang ng audience kasi nga mag-iiba talaga yung story especially when you talk about government on my on my story is uh, of course um merong government in interview ko sila and then of course the community people so ang hirap kasi i can see inconsistencies on what they're saying pero yun nga paano ko mag gagawa ng dignidad both na parang o oh, meron silang dignity the government is also doing their part however um, the community people do not understand this side of the government so my inconsistency eh. so paano siya is gagana i mixing to a narrative content with all those informations that we have just for the documentary so mahirap kasi nga manonood lang ng mga tao na oh okay ang story pero actually pinag-iisipan niya ng mga documentary a documentary so we had this training actually with uh men with our mentors na kailangan talagang um may excite ang tao pataas ng pataas sa kwento na hanggang ano yung um highlight ng kwento mo so uh, that's the art of documentary not just the narrative film but also in the documentary nandiyan din yan na mahirap gawin pero kailangan sundin kasi nga um para to to ano, to make the story na maging interesting sa mga tao not because kailangan na may manood but just for the sake of the art of film kailangan mo yung sunod so yun po ganda nun ano yung sinabi mo na parang it will lead you eh talagang ililid ka niya no uh, doon sa direction minsan hindi mo nga inaasahan diba so that's that's very interesting that's very interesting to hear thank you Ram for that who also wants to answer uh, yung tanong natin <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, Geraldine. Ang um, yun sa akin naman po is siguro more on citations. Madugo yun. So, hindi lang kasi like, hindi ka lang nagbibigay ng facts. Kailangan mo rin i-credit kung saan mong galing. And yun yung usually mahirap, especially sa estudyante. Super, super, super hirap. Yun pa, no? struggles. Citation. And kung, ang dami kasi information sa sa internet eh. Isang click lang, go na, andyan na lahat. So, yun, isa din yun na ang hirap, alin din pipiliin mo? Alin yung more more validated? Like, more to... So, yun. Mahirap pumili. Yun. Yun pa yung sa akin. 
Thank you so much for that. That's true, no? Kasi syempre, as documentary filmmakers, you're also purveyors of truth dapat, di ba? Dapat mm-hmm. yung facts nyo, solid yan. Hindi kayo pwedeng banatan, di ba? Kasi pwedeng itasira ng pelikula ninyo yun, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, thank you so much for... And alam natin, citations, alam naman natin, just ah. intellectual property, super important yan. Yes. Alam natin lahat. So, thank you so much, Sheldon, for that. Uh, anything that you want to add, Char, or Ms. Shem? Meron ko ba? Sige. Ay, ano po? Ayun, so all of us po, uh, like in gathering our stories, we talk to a lot of people, to look at like a lot of sites din po. And then aside from that, yun nga, siguro another thing is ngayon, uso na din, or hindi naman siya uso, pero tama naman, na yun nga, dapat may permits, may waivers, so lahat yan pinapaalam. So yan, yun yung mga things that we went through. Pero siguro, what, what, really, kahit ganito, may, minsan mahirap siya, what keeps us, us filmmakers, is yung heart kasi ng kwento. Pag, na, pag, na, pag nakakausap namin sila, namumove din kami to keep on like telling their stories. And buti na lang, they wanna tell their stories too. So yeah, that, that's what's for all of us po. Thank you so much for that, Geraldine. Of course, ang ganda ng, uh, sorry, sorry. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Marilyn, nalito na ako, di ba? Thank you so much for that answers na talagang very candid yung sinabi ninyo. And alam mo, just a final question, kasi lagi ako manghang-mangha. Every time I watch documentary films, uh, I always, you know, parang yung yung ending kasi sometimes hindi mo na-expect eh. Like example, in Changer, hindi ko na-expect that from a doping incident, naging ano siya, ish, uh, parang naging documentary siya about plant-based diet, etc. So sobra siyang enriching. I want to ask all of our uh, filmmakers here, yung ending ba ninyo or the the output that you expected was it the same as what you envisioned it from the start or nag change siya along the way uh, this is just opening to everybody yun ba yung envision niyo o parang medyo towards the end nagulat na lang kayo na iba pala yung naging output and you're happy with what the output was meron ba gusto sumagot <laughs> okay ako na lang mo first okay go ahead Um, yung sa akin po kasi, originally, hindi po talaga siya um, about sa painter. Last option na lang po yun. Ang originally planned po kasi is, dapat i-feature niya or i-document niya yung um, isang homestead owner sa Bauko. Bauko Mountain Province. Kaso yun nga, nagka-COVID, nag-alert level 3, mahirap yung, yung travel. So yun. Wala nang, hindi na ako pwedeng mag-document doon that time. Tapos, during that time naman, syempre, plan B. Nung plan B naman po, may nahanap naman po akong chef dito sa Bagyo. Kaso yun nga, COVID na naman, may nag-positive dito. So, ayun, wala na. Wala na yung plan B. So, plan C na naman po is, yun, yung painter, yung self-cost. So, din na-recommend ko na yung self-cost. So, yun. Well, looking back, hmm, okay naman. <laughs> Masaya naman po na yun na yung naging result. And I'm hoping if my opportunity, uh, matuloy ko na po yung sa may bao, yung homestead owner. Like, maganda po kasi siya um, in-negate. Kasi since ito against fast food meals, yung sa kanya po kasi more on traditional home cooked meals. So maganda, maganda siyang i-feature if ever. Yan po. Maganda yung part two, di ba? Parang whole food naman yung teacher mo. So thank you for that, no? For being vulnerable. Thank you for sharing that. Kasi minsan, di ba, unexpected yung terms. Hindi natin ina-expect yun, no? But at the end of it, may beauty, di ba? May beauty behind all of these challenges and obstacles. So thank you for for creating that and sharing with us that story, Geraldine. Meron pa bang gusto mag-share? Tingin ko mukha namang uh, nakaplano at ano, no? talagang nakaayon sa kanilang in-envision yung mga pelikula ng ating ibang speaker. So thank you so much. I, I've had so much fun. Uh, pangarap ko rin kasi maging filmmaker. No? Pangarap lang. <laughs> pangarap lang naman. Dami ko pang kailangan uh, alamin at experience because it's really more about you know using this platform and conveying the truth the realities and minsan kasi hindi naiintindihan ng documentary di ba yun yung maganda doon eh. it's open to a lot of interpretation a lot of perspectives and reality kaya uh, sobrang hangang-hanga ako sa inyo so thank you so much for the time baka po may mga may mga questions pa po sa Facebook dahil wala na rin po kaming oras no uh, so our, to our resource speakers kung pwede po if you have time Please feel free to browse the comments of our Facebook. Baka may specific question sa inyo. Sana po may sagot na naman sila. Di ba, Ethel? Yes, yes. Tama. And ayan, sobrang bilis ng oras. Hindi ko man lang naramdaman. Ayan. So, in the interest of time, we will end na po our open forum here. 
Thank you so much po sa support sa ating viewers. Ayan, na hanggang ngayon, nakikinig pa rin for sending their questions. And most importantly to our guests tonight na nag-share ng kanilang sarili-sariling um, in thoughts, uh, experiences, lessons na kanilang natutunan throughout the filmmaking process. So, this time, let's take this time naman to invite again our speakers to um, recap to wrap up the discussion by answering this question. Okay, so huling tanong na po, how would you encourage other filmmakers to produce environmental documentaries? I would like to encourage you as well to um, sabihin na rin kung saan po namin kayo reach mga social media handles nyo po. Ayan, for collaboration, etc. So, uh, Ram, you may want to start. Yes, thank you. So, these uh, the documentary filmmakers should also focus on the environmental issues because napapanahon po ito. Hindi lamang po ito issue na uh, kailangan iset aside, but this is really something that we should really focus on because apitado tayong lahat dito. And I hope uh, um, our energies in doing films is uh, sana magkaroon tayo ng interest in doing films like this because it will somehow shape since we are influencers in a way so it will somehow shape mindset for climate actions so please watch Maha Sa uh, and all the films documentary films believe na believe po ako sa lahat ng mga documentary filmmakers na nakasali po sa ko na finalist with me sobrang gagaling po and manonood po talaga ako ng mga films nila so watch our films in Montañosa so Film Festival 2022 sa lahat ng places in Baguio, mapapanood po kami. And so also follow Vineyard Films, my own uh, production, um, small production company, if you want to follow more of my videos and films. Thank you very much and may God bless us all. Um, hello. Ayan. Ayan. Yeah, I think I'll go ahead. Um, my tagline, san, san ba siya? here, here on the other side here. <laughs> my tagline, we are running out of time. So I think that's that should be that should sink, you know, to uh documentary filmmakers. I hope um you join us in um uh, promoting films in mitigating climate change. And I just remember uh, Barack Obama said that this generation is the last defense against climate change. So what? I mean, we, we, we don't know if after this generation at wala tayong nagawa, may susunod pa kayang generation. And um, we already know the the yung mga lahat ng klase ng problems sa climate change. So I think, um, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this film also is we need to um, bring out solutions. You know, kasi um, alam, we, we need to give more ideas on how to do it. Yung mga ganyan. Be, there, ang Pilipino po maparaan. Uh, there are so many people out there na kailangan nyo lang pong bigyan ng konting attention. And uh, please give them a chance to showcase what they do. So again po, please watch all the finalist films in uh, Montañosa Film Festival. The mobile films are really, really good. I am sure ma inspired din po kayo because uh, it's a mixed narrative and documentary din po very inspiring ang stories nila and uh, congrats sa lahat ng documentary panalong panalo na tayo <laughs> i mean yung yung palabas pa lang natin uh, many people are um, giving uh, good credits already so panoorin niyo po maraming maraming salamat congrats po congrats and thank you thank you po ayan so charlene yes. you want to Ayan po. So, like, to all the, what do you call it, fellow creatives po. So, uh, yun. We, we hope we can also inspire na you guys also create. Kasi, what, hindi lang siya sa timely. Pero, what do you call it, um, ang daming pwedeng stories, ang daming pwedeng gawin, ang daming topics na pwede tungkol sa environment. And also, what do you call that, um, uh, ano tawag doon? 
like we can like bend it We're, like we can make it super creative na may iba siya and yeah wala naman tayong set of rules so yun po and sa so, yun nga po sana po panoorin niyo sa mga tanyo so thank you and it's because of like initiatives like this from the climate reality project na all of us were really grateful for kasi you gave us that platform also to share it more and yeah to understand us more so thank you Ayan. Thank you, Char, and sorry for that. Ayon. So, thank you so much. Um, Geraldine, as a bunso ba? <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Sa akin naman po, feeling ko lang, for me lang po, hindi na natin ka lang encourage yung mga filmmakers kasi feeling ko ginagawa na nila yung part nila. Like, andan na po yung passion, andan na po yung creativity, andan na po lahat eh. Feeling ko ang kailangan natin encourage is yung community to support the filmmakers. Yun na lang ko lang feeling ko po, yun na lang ko lang. Like, ang dami na pong filmmakers na nag- independent filmmakers na na gumagawa ng about sa environment pero hindi lang sila na-promote or hindi lang sila nabibigyan ng tamang platform. So yun. So sana i-promote natin yung community. So yun. Para mas bongga yung change. Ayan. Um, sa ano naman po, ayun, again, um, watch our films po. Super sana mag-enjoy kayo. Like, sana matamaan kayo sa mga films namin. <laughs> Magkaroon ng change, ganun. So, yun. Um, yun, follow the Mandanya sa Film Festival official page. Andan na po lahat. And if, uh, um, yun sa akin po kasi, di ba may artworks po din. If you want to know more about that artwork, meron po sa Instagram ko yung mga explanation per per artwork. So, follow me na lang po doon, Jordan Lasterio. Um, yung name niya is Jade, G-E-Y-D-T-H. So, yun. Kung gusto niya pa malaman yung explanation behind that heartbreak. Yun lang. Thank you. Thank you so much po. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Grabe artist din si Geraldine. No? Kaya talagang sana mga i-follow po natin. Again, maraming maraming salamat. This has been very insightful, very inspiring episode. Maraming salamat. I hope, you know, um, I, I really hope that you 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 achieve whatever was the purpose of your documentary film. Sana po ma- matugunan, no? ma- 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 ma-commit ninyo, yung inaasam ninyo mula dito sa mga pelikulang ito. At sana po ay magpatuloy pa rin kayo. Alam nyo, kailangan na kailangan po talaga natin ng documentaries about environment, especially sa Philippines. Kailangan-kailangan. And you have, you know, the Climate Reality Project Philippines to support you in that. No? So maraming yes. maraming salamat po sa inyo. Thank Again, po. thank you so much to Mantanyo sa Film Festival, to of course to all of the organizers, kami po ay dubhang nagpapasalamat sa inyo lahat. Sana po ay pagpatuloy ninyo these art forms. Sabi nga ni, kanina, no? sabi nga ni, si Geraldine is an artist, di ba? Uh, filmmaker, si Ram, si Shem, si, si Charlene. These are, they are filmmakers. Kung ano po yung art form na kaya ninyong gawin, kung sumasayo po kayo, kumakanta, nagsusulat, kahit na anong uri po ng art form, sana po ay gamitin natin ito para po sa tinatawag natin climate action. So, gamitin natin kung ano po yung kaya natin at nasa abilidad natin kasi kailangan na kailangan po natin siya sa ngayon. Kaya we really encourage everybody who's watching, of course, di ba, na supportahan po natin ang iba't ibang mga creatives, ang iba't ibang mga arts patungkol sa climate change and climate action. Kaya nga po, para sa mga pelikulang ito, very highly relatable and nagpapakita po ng realidad ng buhay. ba diba? Sana po pagkatapos yung panoorin at sana may medyo pumantig, ba diba? may konting kurot sa puso ninyo para po sama-sama tayong lumaban laban sa climate change. ba diba? So maraming maraming salamat to all of our viewers who's watching, of course, definitely to all of our speakers. Very happy to co-host with you, Ethel. Sana sa susunod yes. pa, ba diba? Thank you po, Miss Amy. Yes, of course. And uh, my heart is full. My eyes are full. Ayan. So thank you so much for joining us, lalo na sa ating guest speakers. And oh, we're just really excited to watch your films. Uh, sabayan niyo po kami, mga taga-bagyo dyan. Ayan, sige, manood po tayo na kanilang mga films. Tara po, okay? And looking forward, of course, to seeing you all again for collaborations. Ayan, so... Bilang nasa um, College of Science, okay, so uh, isa sa mga gustong-gusto ko ding matutunan ay ang science communication. And and I'm really happy na I've, I've been given this opportunity to to talk with all of you, to spend time uh, listening, watching your teasers, and listening yung kwento ninyo bilang filmmakers in creating these films. So 
In the meantime, again, please uh, do not forget to join our community, okay, sa lahat ng social media platforms and yung mga in-announce na namin kanina na mga partners, yung mga events. Please don't forget to support them. And of course, follow the Climate Reality Project PH on Instagram at Climate Reality PH and Twitter at Climate Real PH. So, may mga nabanggit ang ating mga guests na kanilang social media handles. So, please follow them too. And you can also visit the socials of our guests and their um, and organizations as well as the partners with their handles flashed on the screen. Okay? Ayan. Para hindi na tayo mahirapan. Ayan. So, screenshot na lang natin yan. Okay? And of course, uh, for the certificate of participation as we promised, okay, so please answer again the feedback form link in the comment section below. Okay? So, salamat. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you everyone. And this has been Klima Totohanan, a webcast organized and led by climate reality leaders to tackle the, or the urgent climate issues of today and tomorrow. Why Klima, klima Totohanan? Because we need real talk and real action on the climate crisis. Maraming 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 salamat po at magandang gabi sa lahat. Thank you, thank you. Thank you po. Thank you very much. Salamat. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm just